Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and this is another episode of Road to Dune. So the Empire Magazine is out, and they released some of it online, uh, some portion of it, because they're doing some exclusive stuff concerning Dune 2020. But now if you want to see the full thing, you have to either purchase the physical magazine or purchase it online. So now I'm going to go over the article that they did release for free. Uh, so it's Denis Villeneuve comparing Paul Atreides to Michael Corleone. So it's really interesting. So we'll get right into it. Dune, Denis Villeneuve compares Paul Atreides to the Godfather's Michael Corleone exclusive image. Now this image uh, was released earlier in the week. This is like more, an ex more of an expanded view of it. After proving he could do huge scope, huge ideas, sci-fi with the likes of Arrival, and Blade Runner 2049, Denis Villeneuve is heading into even more epic science fiction territory with Dune, adapting Frank Herbert's legendary tome into a star-studded blockbuster. It's a famously expansive novel containing entire worlds, cultures, species, and rituals, and at the heart of it all is protagonist Paul Atreides, played in Villeneuve's film by Timothy Chalamet. As we enter the Dune universe, at the start of the story, the young Atreides has a considerable journey ahead of him, with Villeneuve teasing a dramatic character arc that he compares to one of the all-time cinematic greats. Paul has been raised in a very strict environment, with a lot of training, because he's the son of a duke, and one day he's training to be the duke, Villeneuve tells Empire. But as much as he's been prepared and trained for that role, is it really what he dreams to be? That's the contradiction of that character. It's like Michael Corleone in The Godfather. It's someone that has a very tragic fate, and he will become something that he was not wishing to become. If that hints at dark times ahead, Villeneuve also highlights the virtues of Atreides, who will become a man over the course of the story. His survival depends on being able to make the right decisions and adapt to different dangerous situations. It's a very beautiful story about someone that becomes empowered, the director explains. Like any young adult, he is looking for his identity and trying to understand his place in the world. And he will have to do things that none of his ancestors were able to do in order to survive. He has a beautiful quality of being curious about other people, of having empathy, something that will attract him towards other cultures, and that's what will save his life. So that's an uh, interesting comparison to Michael Corleone. Uh, now, The Godfather is easily one of my, would be one of my favorite movies, not my all-time favorite movie. It will be up there in like probably like a top 10 list or something. And that's probably like one of the best character arcs is he has the best transition, like most organic, natural transition from someone going, you know, basically from the light side to, at the end of the movie, the dark side. Uh, that's, it would be nice if they were able to do that as well in the prequels with Anakin's drift from the light side to the dark side as well as they did it in uh, the Godfather movie. But it worked really well. And I never really thought of comparing Paul Atreides to Michael Corleone before. The two never crossed my mind, but, and there's a bit of comparison there because in the book, Paul has an awareness like that he's some kind of a terrible purpose. He has a terrible purpose and he is a terrible purpose. And it's something, it's a fate he doesn't want to go to. And we all know what that happens when you read later on in the books is uh, basically uh, he becomes this, you know, horrible conqueror and kills billions of people and things like that. And, uh, that's what happens in the books. And this is something in the first book, he's trying to avoid that, but he just gets swept up by his fate and ends up having that tragic end anyway. Uh, kind of like Michael Corleone in the Godfather movie series. Um, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting thing. And I think this article in this interview with Denny Villeneuve highlights that I think he really gets it. I honestly think he gets it. Because this is something that David Lynch film didn't get. It, uh, it kind of hinted at it a little bit of the oncoming... Uh, you know, Holy War and stuff like that. But uh, 
at the end of the movie, now probably because it was taken away from David Lynch and studio interference and all that, but at the end of the movie, you know, he basically becomes a superhero. He basically becomes a god. He makes it rain on Arrakis. And then it says uh, he would go on to bring uh, peace where there was war and love where there was hate and all this. And he basically becomes like a heroic figure at the end. But that's totally the opposite of what happens in the books. He doesn't do any of that in the books. He doesn't bring peace where war was. He basically brings war everywhere and, you know, wipes out billions of people. And he even talks about his numbers and stuff in the other books of how many people he killed and things like that. So that's interesting. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about this image here that was released. And uh, I can look at it and I can tell you this is the scene where he fights Gurney Halleck. Uh, that's what I, I, I would I would bet my bottom dollar on. That's what this uh, picture is taken from. It's from that scene. And just from looking at it, he has like a device on his hand. And it's got like a little blue light, it looks like. Now, I'm going to guess that is, they're going to, that's going to be his uh, body shield. Instead of having the body shield like as a, on a, as a belt, it looks like they're going to have it as a device that you strap on your hand. And that's probably how you turn on and off your body shield. Uh, whatever other thing it could be, I don't know. And then we get to see with the two, two knives and stuff like that there. And uh, when you look at the background, you can see it's got like a wooden hexagonal uh, floor. You can see like the wooden ornate desk and all the like the brick trim in the back. And that all that set, that really makes me think of the 84 film. The 84 film kind of had that same aesthetic to it with like all the woodwork and all that kind of thing on the uh, set. And in that same area where Paul and Gurney Halleck uh, fought it out with uh, personal shields. Uh, but it, uh, it, it, it really makes me wonder if they really did use the 84 film as a visual visual launching point for this new Dune film, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it looks uh, it looks really cool and it really captures the feel of the book, in my opinion, because that's how I always kind of imagine things in the book. Everything's like has this medieval look to it. Everything has like because they're gone backwards kind of in technology because of the Butler and Jihad, and uh, yeah, it, it looks good. Uh, I think uh, it, no, it really gets me pumped to see the movie. It gets me excited. Can't wait to see it. And uh, that looks like a great looking set and can't wait to see more of it. And uh, hopefully we get a trailer soon. The trailer's got to be coming here soon. So yeah, uh, now to get that magazine, I looked online. It's 20 bucks to order the online version of that magazine. And uh, I don't know if it came out yesterday. I looked around for it yesterday. Couldn't find it anywhere, any newsstands anywhere. So I don't know if it came out today, if it's actually out today or what. But uh, I would actually like to pick up that magazine. And eventually, I don't know if they still do this because I haven't really seen it in a long time, but it's something I used to always try to pick up when I was a kid. Because movies would always have an official magazine for that movie. I don't know if, how many people remember that. Remember Batman 89 had one? And Termin the one I had that really uh, stands out in my mind, I had the one for Terminator 2, the official movie magazine of Terminator 2. Because I remember I like bought that and I like poured over that magazine like over and over and over and over again in anticipation for t2 from when it came out in theaters so if they do a magazine like this for uh dune i'm gonna grab that one for sure uh and i know they did a magazine like that for the 1984 lynch one too and you can still get that online in some places you can order back issues of that which is kind of cool so that's everything i got to say in this video let me know what you think in the comments section and i will see you at the next one i'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.